Mon Calamari start a fender, Jaina said, pointing toward the upper left quadrant of the screen. With a flick of her other hand, she angled the viewer to bring the beautiful ship into complete view, and it was spectacular. Like all the Mon Calamari ships, this one was unique in artwork, sleek and flowing, and ultimately deadly. It was the largest ship ever produced on that watery world, nearly twice the size of the battlecruiser they had left behind between Osirin and Ramamul, and the first Mon Calamari start a fender produced for the New Republic fleet, the Viscount, Leia remarked. That's a quote from Vector Prime, the first book within the New Jedi Order. The Viscount was the greatest New Republic capital ship ever created. As explained by its Star Wars miniatures blurb, the Viscount was designed after the Black Fleet Crisis, and was meant to anchor New Republic fleets in major high tonnage engagements. At 17 kilometers long and extraordinarily massive, it was more than suited for that role. The Viscount represents the absolute peak of Mon Calamari engineering, and though as with all Mon Calamari ships, each Viscount was individual and slightly different, each was also a phenomenal tool of war. Let's first talk history. As the Saga edition of the Starships of the Galaxy Guide explains, the Viscount was one of several ship classes within the Star Defender program. Star Defenders were the New Republic's euphemistic term for Super Star Destroyers, which were named as such to avoid the obvious political connotations associated with building something called a Super Star Destroyer. Without prior experience or expertise building ships of this size, the first ship of the class, the Viscount itself, didn't enter service until 25 years after the Battle of Yavin, and that's 8 or 9 years after its conception. However, had the Vong not invaded the galaxy, the Viscount would have perhaps been an anomaly within the New Republic Navy. Many argued that Star Defenders just weren't needed, citing the fact that Imperial War lords were increasingly less common, and the few who did remain often didn't have access to anything serious, certainly not Super Star Destroyers. We don't know for certain, but it's very possible that by the time of the Yuzon Vong invasion, the later ships in the Viscount program were either cancelled or delayed. Obviously, the extragalactic invaders changed all of that, and production of Viscounts was not only restarted, but accelerated by 25 or 26 ABY. By the collapse of the New Republic and the formation of the replacement Galactic Federation of Free Alliances, there were several Viscounts in action across the galaxy, which was one of the only reasons the GFFA could directly oppose the otherwise unstoppable Yuzon Vong armadas. A single Viscount was an absolute force within the galaxy. The ship was meant to operate independently, if needed, and was given sensor, shielding, and computer systems vastly superior to those of a Super Star Destroyer. Less focus was also placed on attacking planets and supporting an aggressive war effort generally. The Viscount had less hangar space in favor of extra armor, but because the ship carried less ground units, and that's everything from transports to ground garrisons and attack walkers, the Viscount could actually carry more starfighters overall. Typically, a Viscount's Star Defender would be stocked with a few hundred starfighters, and that's because significant hangar space was reserved for repairing and transporting friendly ships, and the hangars of a Viscount could actually accommodate something as large as a frigate. If needed, a Viscount could actually carry an entire fleet within itself, not only allowing for dozens of vessels to launch unexpectedly, but also performing on-the-fly maintenance. And this defensive specialization is really the heart of the Viscount's effectiveness. It could support itself, protect friendly vessels, and single-handedly hold off enemy armadas. Although the Viscount more or less matched the Executor in pure firepower, as one might expect, it was far, far more durable. Viscount Star Defenders used standard Mon Calamari redundant shield generators and had extra armor when compared with an Executor. Add to that anything I just mentioned, and anything short of a good portion of your navy will not be able to get through even one of these ships. And unsurprisingly, during the Yuzon Vong War, Viscounts were often placed directly within the Yuzon Vong Warpath, and Star Defenders, especially when paired with other dreadnoughts, single handedly held down key planets like Mon Calamari. The Bounty and the Krakana, the second and third Viscounts ever created, were single handedly responsible for helping to protect the Outer Rim, though the latter was sadly destroyed en route to Kuat. Other than that, the Viscounts played key roles at the defense of Mon Calamari and likely the Battle of Yuzon Tar. 
As I mentioned earlier, a single Viscount was 17 kilometers long, mounted thousands of heavy and ordinary turbo lasers, had a dedicated point defense system, and interestingly, half a million back to tanks, which is really just an incredible resource. Let's talk out of universe. Surprisingly, unlike Super Star Destroyers, Viscount see very little action within the main books of the expanded universe itself. Despite being supposedly a key aspect of the New Republic and GFFA war effort, the Viscount only really appears in two books within the New Jedi Order, and there it's really just a name drop. All information we have comes from secondary sources, especially the Starships of the Galaxy Guide. There is also some length discrepancy that we should talk about. Early sources have stated specifically that the Viscount, a Super Star Destroyer killer, was 17 kilometers long. The Essential Guide to Warfare, however, seems to retcon this somewhat with the following quote. The prototype Viscount was an impressive 3 kilometer long battlecruiser, while the mighty Krakana and Bounty that followed were 17 kilometer long dreadnoughts. In my mind, this sort of comes out of left field, but notably that also means the New Republic had no completed dreadnoughts ready for the time of the invasion, as the Bounty and Krakana were both incomplete and were the second and third Viscounts produced. Hero's Trial also mentions a Corellian Viscount, and I'm not sure whether that's a simple mistake, which is pretty likely, or whether Corellian shipyards were also building Viscounts for the New Republic. Anyway, that's all for the Star Defender. Big shout out to EC Henry for making the excellent model that I've used today. You can check out his channel down in the description. Now, however, let's take a look at the question, or actually today, questions of the day. And thank you to everyone who used the hashtag AskEck. I know you guys can't see comments with that hashtag, but I can in the YouTube Creator Studio. Anyway, I have two questions today. The first is from Jan Negri, and I am taking out of universe questions. He's basically asking about starting a YouTube channel, and I thought I'd answer this because I started mine just over a year and a half ago. Anyway, I would not recommend starting for YouTube channels. What I would recommend is choosing the niche that you're most passionate about and putting as much time and effort and any money that you have into working on that. When I first started, even though I wasn't getting many views or putting out really high quality videos, I was still trying to put stuff out there once, twice, three times a week, and that's despite having a real job at the time. It's already a grind to get established, so there's no point splitting your efforts across four different avenues. And Carl also asks, what was the major flaw of the Forerunners that allowed the Flood to so easily defeat them? We do have a couple of problems with that premise. First of all, I'm not sure whether the Flood won, ultimately they were wiped out by the Halo Array, though they did succeed in killing the Forerunner, sort of. Anyway, however, even that took several centuries. I think the main weakness of the Forerunner was just how large the Empire was. It was super easy to find FTL capable ships, the flood propagated extremely quickly, and by the time the Forerunner realized what was going on, the flood had already spread to several planets. There's also the interaction with other major species like ancient humanity. But the thing about the flood, when you're fighting them, they almost use your intelligence against you. Every sentient being that they consume has their memories and thoughts and knowledge added to the group hive mind. So the more advanced you are, the higher ceiling the flood is, and you can see that very clearly in a way with the whole mending it by a situation. But thank you very much for the questions. Again, use the hashtag AskEck here or on Twitter to get your own seen by me. Anyway, until next time, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, this has been Eckhart's Ladder. May the Force be with you.